क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट टू डिरेक्ट्री स्ट्रक्चर्स वन इज सिंगल लेवल अनदर इज टू लेवल डिरेक्ट्री how this directory structure is implemented and what are the advantages and disadvantages of this particular two level directory structures single level directory structure is a most common and simple directory structure used by any operating system it is containing in using the single directory all the files under it so whenever an user or a number of users wants to refer to their file access they will search for this single directory and have their files in accessible like when the single directory is used for naming all the files then two situations can occur with problematic number 1 is the duplicating file problem and number 2 is the number of users problem If a user is using a particular file name then it is possible that other user is also using that particular file name e now to have two users concurrently using the same file name is a problem under the single level directory say for example a programmer is used two different task two groups of students one is 23 number of students another is 11 number of students so the first students groups are using the assignment 2.c this file and another 11 number of students is using a prog.2c this file now as the system supports 1 to 255 characters in the sequence of naming of a file then it is possible to made a unique name out of this 255 characters combination so we can give the unique name to the particular file systems but even with a single number a large number of files become problematic to become in a single directory structure so single level directory structure that is used for this type of large file numbers can be problematic for a even single level system now where a single user is accessing a hundreds of files within a computer system another hundreds of files within another computer system so keeping track of this huge number of file system under a single level directory is a daunting task so we will now see that how under a single level directory scheme we are storing the files so here we can see that all the files that is related to a particular directory is stored inside that particular directory only now no files that is similar to a nature then can be stored in different directories so this is a single level directory system of use but we can see that the directory numbers are higher as there are many types of files introduced in that particular system now we will move to the next section as a two level directory as we can see that the duplicacy of name inside a single user or for multiple users is a problem and is a serious problem of single level directory scheme so to address to this problem we are introducing another level of directory that is known as two level directory in two level directory a user which is using all the files are stored inside that user level directory or the ufd this user file directory is storing all the files that list together full form and operate on that particular user now this uft is a similar in nature but the only difference is that each uft can store only the process or files that is operated by that particular user so when the user logs in or a user job starts then an mfd or a master file directory searches for the user process and then locates an identifying pointer to that user process so it is containing a user number or account number along with it and a pointer which is indicating to the user process to which that is pointing to now whenever a name ft is pointing to a ufd then it can specify that how the ufd or where the ufd is located and to locate that file system under the particular ufd so this clear is very simple that ufd is referred for a particular file entered in the process ufd and when a user is running for the system then mft is search for that particular ufd so to search for a file inside this ufd we need to remember that any name of file that can be duplicated and another number of users file in this another ufd 
Suppose a user 1 is having a file data.c, user 2 is also can have a file data.c where user 1 is not having another file name data.c is maintained. So whenever an operating system is creating a file entry in that particular UFD, then it searches that another name of the file is present in that particular UFD or not. And to delete a file, that particular UFD is only searched and deleted for that particular file name. So we will now see how a two-level directory structure actually implements. So here we can see a master file directory with four users, u1, u2, u3, and u4. So u1 is having a user file directory with the directories cat, bo, a, and test. And u2 is also having the names like a and test. It is common to this a and test, but the files are actually different from each other. The file name can be duplicated, but within the each user file directory, no duplicating name cannot contain. So u3 is containing a data and u4 is containing data and a along with another directory x. And all the directories are containing the actual files in the physical file system. So using this we can say that this user level file directory and master file directory can make together a two level directory structure. The user directories can be created and deleted as per necessary. Now whenever this creation and deletion comes into question, it is considered as a privileged instruction that is performed by the operating system only. The operating system then creates an UFD on if entry of this U1 and then allocate this entry to the MFT. Now this MFT is containing this user file name number along with this pointer to the particular UFT. So the operating system decides that when to create the UFT and add it to MFT and delete for the vice versa. Now it as solves the duplicating name problem with the single level directory but it also has some disadvantages like the problem of the isolation of users. The isolation of users is useful when the users that are not cooperating with each other like each one user is having their own sets of operation. But if the users are doing a joint work or a group work, then cooperating becomes necessary and this two-level directory isolates these users of the cooperating work. So that is a major advantage of the two-level directory. As some systems do not allow the local file of an UFD to be accessible by another user or another UFD. So the access to get permitted, we may want to or we must want to name a file uniquely for that particular UFD or a UFD that is want to get access permitted. So suppose a file name test.c is within an UFD u1 and another file name say u2 want to operate on that particular file test.c. So it will then definitely make a unique name to that particular file on u1. So we can think this two-level directory as a tree of height 2 or an inverted tree of height 2 where in the root we are having this master file directory with the usernames and the pointers and as it descends we are having the user file directories as their leaves. Now this user file directories descendants are the actual files where the access is made. Now this descendants of this user file directory actually is the leaves of the trees or the final leaves of the trees. So these leaves or the files can be accessed if we make a name from this root to the leaf that is from the MFT via the UFT to the final files. 
So a path name that is containing from this root to the leaf or from the MFT to the UFT is a name prescribed by the containing all the directory names accordingly or in order. So when you are mentioning the name like So we are mentioning here that under any user directory, pbj is the directory and test.c is the file name. So suppose the user1 want, want to direct reference to that particular file test.c present on its own UFD. So it can refer directly the name test.c with. Now whenever it want to access the u2 file name test.dvc which is accessed by the particular u2 user, then it should name like where it is mentioning that I want to access the user to stage.c function. So this path name is extremely important while the syntax of the memory management or file management of an operating system. So to name a file uniquely, the user must know the path name from the root directory to the actual files. Now another type of syntax or another extension of syntax that is used by the operating system is to include the volume information in that path name. So the path name in Windows is generally exemplified with an nator followed by a colon. So suppose if we are telling like So we are referring here the C as a volume or the root directory, U2 as the UFD and test.c as the actual file. So now different operating system uses different types of syntaxes like Unix refers to the volume information on another level to the extreme. Now it uses that this U2 must be defined with another bracket and the directory and the subdirectory in the third bracket followed by the file name. So the exact situation can be described in Unix as So here we are using that C is a volume name, SST is the directory name, U2 is the subdirectory name, test.c is the file name along with a version number of that particular file. So it can have that the version numbers can be specified to differentiate among the file partitions. Like suppose a file having three partitions 1, 2 and C. So we can say test1.c, test2.c and test3.c has their partitioning. Solaris uses the name of the volumes a part of the path name that is a directory structure. So it uses C U2 slash C as an example of the path name of that particular operating system. A special situation may occur in some operating system. Now if you are talking about the system programs, they are often considered as files or normal files including at this MFD and UFD. So the loaders, linkers, compilers, assemblers, general routines and libraries are considered as files. Now if you want to access these files, then they should be copied to the each UFD file directory. So whenever we are copying this UFD, it is containing an extraneous error system. As say suppose a system file is containing 5 MB and there are 12 users in that system. So 5 into 12, 60 MB of a space will be wasted for just copying the system files. So is it is a simple solution to have a system file copy in each UFD, but it makes a wastage of the memory space by the operating system. So to address to this solution, we can keep a special user directory along with this UFDs under a master file directory. So whenever a file name is searched, we can first search to the local UFDs. If the file name is found there, it is used. If it is not found, then we can search to the special user directories, which is containing all the system files of that particular operating system. So by this way, we can put all the system files of variable sizes and fake sizes under a single directory. So when we want to search to the system file, we can directly access to this system directory or special system directories. So this UFDs or a search to this UFDs are searched by a search name. 
So it can contain a several hundreds of directories if we want to search for a long operating system file. And all the sequences should be addressed in order to solve and refer to the actual file. This system is often implemented in Unix and Windows operating system. Other uses some other level of directories which we will discuss in the next videos. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.